Tēnā korua, um, he wā pauri mō korua, a, a tough time for you both at the moment, for the whole team. Um, I'll just start with you. You guys have put so much work into this campaign. How disappointing is it to not come away with a medal for the first time in history? Yeah, I mean, we, we know, we knew what this game meant, uh, not only for individuals, our team, but also for the Silver Friend brand. Um, and so, you know, we, we are on the wrong side of the ledger, so to speak. But also, I couldn't be more proud of this is how crazy it is. Uh, we, we did our best. Um, and I think each individual who went out there tried their hardest. And um, this is where we currently are. Probably certain things happened, which has been a regular of ours. But um, in regards to the intent and what people put out there, I couldn't be more happier. You guys are so close, not only in this game, but the game against uh, England as well. Is it a little bit frustrating knowing that you had it in the grasp of your hands, but you just couldn't uh, get over the line in the end? Yeah, I think um, you know one of the things we have been talking about is the, the learnings that have happened in each match. I think probably the last three coming back from um, South Africa from there onwards. Um, just our ability to execute and deliver when we are under the pump, because we are still getting ball. Um, I thought uh, Kate Heffernan did a really job, good job with her and Maddie. Um, we were able to take that ball nicely through the court and get some fluidity. And I think that also helped the attacking end as well. But then we coughed up a wee bit as we got on and uh, hence changes being made. Um, so there are key areas that we um, haven't improved on. But there's also, as I say, the intent and the heart is definitely out there. And Mills, I'll come to you. I can see how emotional it was for you. Um, 2018, the Commonwealth Games was a tough year. We also didn't medal there. Again, here in Cape Town, how tough, I guess, is it for you as a captain, repeating a history repeating itself, basically? Yeah, it is really tough, but I definitely count these two campaigns as um, polar opposites. Um, I think the heart, um, the heart and the ability for us to be really united. Um, this one is, is a whole different kind of, um, a different kind of feel. I definitely second that the intent and the heart was, was definitely out there and, and every single thing that we said and did and felt um, there was nothing like left in the tank. Just definitely gutted that we couldn't execute in those really, not even just crucial moments sometimes where it wasn't, um, I mean every moment comes down to a, cru um, it's a crucial moment in a game like this. So yeah, really devastated some of our young girls and they did really great um, and they're the ones who are going to be there in four years. So. Um, if anything, just to remind them that, that they don't want to be like this when they get four years time, and I think that they'll be amazing, but just to feel it for right now. Um, well, speaking of that four years, I know it's very raw at the moment, but have you both had a chance to think about what the future looks like for you both heading into this next sort of world cycle? Good question. Um, we were just really in this moment, I would say. Um, for, for me. <laughs> Noel's Mills, congratulations on what you have been able to achieve this tournament. I know you'd both be disappointed. Noel's just on that game, obviously you, you changed the tactics in regards to how you defensively approached Jamaica. Did you feel the combination of Jury and Karaka was, was better than in the, the group game? Yeah, I did. I thought we were turning over a lot of ball and, and Kelly was on the back and really contesting. And there was a few fumbles that ha had happened or, you know, probably more inaccuracy of the shot that had happened that did in the prelim. So I thought they actually were not too bad, but I also thought the work that was done on the outside by Maddie, who was fresh legs, and also Kate going back as well in wing defence, I think that also helped the inside circle. Is there anything you, you changed about the last few days with regards to the way that you guys approached or carried out certain things? Um, probably what I would change is uh, uh, Grace not getting injured. Um, <laughs> that would have been great for that not to happen. Um, I think that'd probably be a starting point. Um, I think, you know, these are the things that we've been constantly talking about. We're actually final tracking right through until you get the business in. But I think when you look at the quality of Australia and England out there, and we know because we were there in 2019, the, um, the discipline that's required to win games is massive. Uh, we don't quite have that at the moment, but you can see teams who are in that realm. I think also when I look at our team, we're probably at least 400 to 450 caps less. Um, that makes a difference in regards to experience and our maturity out on court. Um, and the only way that you can get that is by being out there. So we've got to lick the wounds, to take accountability for where we are. Um, and it's quite interesting because Mila said to me uh, downstairs, she goes, one of our young ones, she said, um, what you've got to remember is netball has evolved. And I said, oh yeah. And then she said, yeah, not like a hundred years ago when you were playing, there's like six teams who are vying for top. You know, so I think we've got to take that. We're, we're not number one, we know that. 
Uh, we're not number two or three at the moment, we know that, but we know other teams are, are chipping at the heels. And I think for a branding or netball in general, that can only be a good thing because you can't just have New Zealand and Australia vying for things. So, uh, you know, we, we take it on the chin and we're accountable for our actions. Niels, I know you've got it, but on a lighter note, what are you most proud of from this campaign from your team? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm proud of our ability to grow each game and even though we didn't, um, we didn't take this one, I think our ability to demand more from each other, to stay, to continue to pull tighter rather than pull apart um, as, the, as the campaign went on, I think that that's really big. I'm really proud of our, um, we had some young girls out there on court as well too, it's in their first World Cup, so you know it's a big experience and they, they went out there and did their thing and I think that that's really important so they'll continue to grow. Hi Nils, um, you did a similar move yesterday with bringing Jane Watson on with a couple of minutes to go in the game and you made the same decision today. What impact do you think that had and did you consider bringing Jane on earlier in goal defence? No, I didn't actually. Kelly was doing, I thought Kelly was doing well. Uh, she was underneath the cylinder. They were both turning over ball. We got to the point where usually it's five minutes to go with five being down. So you've got to make a change if you want to actually try and turn the ball over. So it was a bit of trying the, um, just to change the timing of it a wee bit, see if we can sort of pull something out of the air. Um, I thought Kelly, I, no, I wasn't prepared to change Kelly. I thought she did a great job for us. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, Nola, anything you think the, if the core of this group sits together like the young ones, Tiana, Kate, Maddie, um, how good can they be in this next cycle? I think that's the exciting thing, um, even like Kelly, you know, so she's got another cycle to go, uh, Fee's got another cycle, Cutton's got another cycle. So apart from probably Mills and maybe Gina, you know, we're, we're actually looking not too bad moving forward. Um, it sucks to be where we currently are, but once again the experience that these players will get out on court can look nice for us moving forward. Also when I look at maybe some of the other teams and when I say around um, experience, um, I would assume some people will drop off in the next cycle. Um, so, you know, still got a bit of work to do. Has it hammered at home to you how to win a World Cup, everything kind of has to yeah. fall in place, whether it's avoiding injuries, whether it's just getting 12 players humming, how hard is it to win a World Cup? Yeah, I mean, we know what it's like in 2019. It's very hard to win a World Cup. I think it's the attention to detail, not only on court, but also off court. Um, the ability to commit to each other and the discipline when you are out on court. We ebbed and flowed throughout the tournament, so we just weren't good enough to be able to compete at the level that we could have or should have.